take a lee -lee, take a lee, lee Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? <clears throat> so, today we are going to be at the Mountains of Madness. Okay? So, this is um, an H.P. Lovecraft story um, that's basically a novel. It's 40,000 words-ish. Um, it's a chunker. Um, and I don't know why I always feel like I need to preface his stuff, but this is a real prime example of why prefacing <clears throat> his stuff is kind of important because we got to look at the period in which this was written. <clears throat> Basically, we have, um, like, this is, like, 31, I think. Mm, like, early 30s. <clears throat> and the thing about this is, during that time, we had a huge, um, I don't want to say feet, but feet of uh, global exploration, um, air travel, uh, National Geographic, like, there are a lot of things in the present of the time where people were constantly wanting to find out more. They wanted to explore. Um, and if it wasn't them doing it themselves, they wanted to read about it. They wanted to learn about it. So this was kind of like a really big deal at the time. And this is also why a lot of people thought um, the stuff Lovecraft wrote about was true. Because compared to his contemporaries of the Weird Tales days and all that, um, he would write his stories usually all from like a, a first person recount of something that happened. So it gives it some sense of belief. And then when those works were being written, like, when when they're being read, the narrator is, like, basically, like, look, I know you're gonna, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but this is what fucking happened. And this insistence of the shit being true. Then you have um, all of the mentioned to the Necronomicon. And this is when... And it's littered with other factual things. So when you go in and you're reading this and you're like, okay, he's talking about this, he's talking about this, and the Necronomicon. Oh, the Necronomicon's a real book because this scientist is talking about it with all these other texts that are real texts. You know, so there's all of this stuff on top of everything else. Now, at the Mountains of Madness, um, pretty much every Lovecraft fan will probably say this is one of his best works. And when you're reading it, there are chapters of this that are just like something you would read out of National Geographic or um, where it's I don't want to say the science but like the I guess that's what it would be the, the, the research and the study of the things that are being seen as opposed to the horror of what's going to happen now, if that 
builds suspense for you as a reader, knowing that some shit's about to go down, but we're spending like three chapters deciphering hieroglyphs or something like that, um, then yeah, that's going to build a ton of suspense. But a lot of people don't understand Lovecraft's... Uh, like, why people like Lovecraft in the first place. Like, they don't get it. They're like, he's really a boring writer and all this other stuff. But it's not so much of him being a boring writer as it is him going over everything in such great detail that the fiction you're reading comes across as nonfiction, if that makes sense. So, with all that being said... At the Mountains of Madness gets fucking crazy. And it starts off with this expedition of people going to Antarctica to um, just get samples. Like, um, they have a drill, they're going to drill down, get samples or whatever. And when they're, they're there, they have their planes and they're going to, like, fly around and, like, check shit out they see, like, all these, like, weird hazes over certain areas, and then there's this giant mountain, and on top of the giant mountain is, like, something at first they weren't sure what it was, but in clo closer inspection of this, it's, like, a fucking, like, city carved out of limestone and ice on top of this fucking mountain. It's, like, just giant, like, world-building shit, okay? So, the team breaks off as, and when I'm saying this to you, you go, oh, I've heard that before in such and such movie or such and such book. It's because of this book that you heard this. But, like, the team breaks up because one guy wants to go check something out over here and the rest of them are like, oh, that's probably not going to do anything. And he's like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway, you know. And um, so he takes, like, a plane, a bunch of dogs, some people, the drill, um, all the shit, and they go make camp somewhere a little farther away. And they have, like, these radios they're going to talk back and forth on. Well, they start drilling, and they find this big cavern. And in the cavern, there's stuff that's, like, 30 million years old and stuff that's, like, 100 million years old. So it's all bizarre. Like, they don't understand, like, what the fuck. And then they find these things. Um, and there are these giant things that... Um, have been really well preserved, and so they take them out, they're gonna cut them up, um, and dissect and try to find out what the fuck they are, because he can't tell if they are vegetable, or if they are animal, and all this other shit. And then they lose track of them, like he's not responding and all this shit. So then the two guys and a couple other dudes, like, fly over and go to where they think they are, to try to see what happened. And when they get there, shit is all fucked up. Okay. Now, this is probably the strongest part of the story for me, and it's not because of Lovecraft's writing. It's like him telling you what they see now, and... And then, of course, the, like, when he was talking about these things they pulled up out of the cavern, the dogs hated them. The dogs were going crazy, so they had to keep the dogs away from these things. And, um, but, like, the place is in total disaster. Like, everything's destroyed. No one's alive. Like, it's just fucked. This part of the story rings, rings true to me, we'll say. Because I've always, like, replayed what happened, you know? And that's not in the story, but in my head, that's, like, the most vivid part of the story. Like, whenever I think about this story, 
the thing I think about is the stuff that's not said in the story, if that makes any sense. And it's fucking just nuts. So, real quick, I will show you this. This is out of um, Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. This has been, like, one of my favorite books since I was a wee little lad. Um, But the thing that they pulled up that they didn't know what the fuck it was, was an old one or an elder thing. And that's what it looks like. Okay, whoop, whoop. Well, this is Barlow's interpretation of very, like, descriptive descriptions, okay? So, like, it, that's just some weird-looking thing. And then over here it shows what his eyes look like and what its mouth looks like and how those little silica helps it see. And then at the bottom right here, it has, like, one of the footprints that they're going to find later of those, like, talon, not talon, but, like, tentacle-looking things. Um, so, anyway, uh, it goes on and on about what they find. And then they go um, up to this civilization area. <clears throat> and I think for a lot of people, um, if you're not into the heavy world building and shit, this, the next, like, five chapters of this story might, like, bore the shit out of you, but they go into great detail of all the shit they're finding. And again, these are research scientists, you know, like, they're there to find shit and study it. And yes, this isn't what they were there to find and study, but because they are there, they're, like, drawing pictures of shit. They're fucking, um, just, like, getting in the science of figuring out what all this shit is and piecing all of it together. And, um, they kind of come across a bunch of stuff to where they could kind of tell part of the history of the things that were in there. And, um, I mean, where do you go from here? It goes on and on, and then some fucking shit happens, like I was saying earlier. Like, you read all this stuff, um, knowing that, like, there will come a point where some shit gets real, and so, like, and you know that reading it, so you're like, it, it's building suspense. But, um, I really think that modern readers, knowing all we know, and being able to just fucking go on Google and find out whatever the fuck we need to find out at the drop of a hand, whatever, um, kind of hurts stories like this because the awe and wonderment of so many things are fucking gone now. Because, like, if you are curious about something, you can find out in seconds. And so you're like, oh, okay, whatever. But, like, this is like... And I mean, sure, like, if one of us stumbled upon an ancient civilization um, of otherworldly beings, it would be very exciting and interesting. But, um you don't have the the wonderment of the world like it like whenever like there was a find in Egypt or um something like that or whatever like or a new animal that no one had ever heard of before or something like that was fucking worldwide news and um Everyone was hearing about it. It was on newsreels at movie theaters and shit, you know? Now, if someone were to find, like, a new mummy or a body that is older than conceived thought or something like that, it's, like, maybe, like, the 12th topic on your fucking Google Trends, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, the sense of awe in the reader is gone. And I feel like... You could kind of see in, like, weird fiction where the height of that 
wonderment was on Earth. And then there was a point where I think people were like, yeah, we found everything we could find. And so what happens? Uh, we start looking into space. We got to find shit out there now. And so you go from this like kind of weird fiction shit and then you go into your science fiction um, into like the real true golden age of science fiction and it's just so interesting and I used to think this way about like horror movies too like you could always see what society as a whole was worried about thinking about interested about by looking at the media at the time because just like now like how there's so many stories written about um equality or oppression and shit like that um you have like <laughs> i just realized i said and shit like that i didn't mean to downplay that but like you could see the cultural pulse i guess in art and in fiction so it's it's so hard for me to try to recommend stuff to people when I feel like people don't give a shit about the history of what society was interested in at, a, at any given time so cause like I mean most people, when they hear Lovecraft, all they go, oh, he was a shitty racist, okay? Not gonna fucking argue with you on that one. Um, but when you look at the body of his work, like... I don't know, I just, I feel like all of his contemporaries were just writing stuff that was like... Egad, a monster, run, holy mackerel, you know, like, and he was trying to trick the populace into thinking that all the stuff he was writing about was not only real, but like a threat that was going to eventually get them. And then trying to litter his own mythology into scientific history. And that's why he has stuck. Like, that is why people still talk about him. That is why you could get Cthulhu slippers, you know? Um, so, anyway, <clears throat> that's my two cents. This is a heavy story with a ton of dense, like, science that's not very scientific. Okay? Um, but it's a lot of fun. And if you could put yourself into the shoes of somebody in 1931 who's constantly hearing about discoveries found all over the world, this story would kick your fucking ass, okay? So next time we're doing Shadow Over Innsmouth, and I just realized, too, that I think I put The Whisper in Darkness on Weird Mass twice instead of putting out The Mountains of Madness on here. So, um, I'm going to go fix that on Weird Mask right now. So, um, hopefully by the end of the day, you're going to have At the Mountains of Madness, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, and uh, Man Eaters of Zambula by Robert E. Howard up there, so you can read those for next week. And then I'm going to also, instead of just doing um, Edgar Rice Burroughs' Princess of Mars, on Saturday and Sunday, I think I'm going to post a chapter every day so we could get to um, Gods of Mars by um, next month and have like more of a read along with Gods of Mars. I think that'll be fun. So that is the pulp stylings of this channel over the next week. And um, tomorrow I'm going to do my Q&A thing um, that you guys were writing questions in for the 1500 subs and um i'll do that and yeah i guess that's it so um <clears throat> go to weird mask read the stuff um check out my patreon links below and check out my um sneak peek link of what's happening next month too because that's going to be exciting 
So, um, yeah. So until next time, I will see you later. My computer's already trying to cut me out of here. Bye-bye.